So we study how people react towards uncertainty. And what we show is it very much depends on what you call uncertainty. Even without changing the objective level of uncertainty, you can make people react positively or negatively towards uncertainty simply by calling it by a different name. Framing effects are effects um, where you call an option or a product by different names even though you don't change the meaning of it. So for example, you could call uh, beef 75% lean or 25% fat. It's the same information, but it's a different name applied to the same product. And studies have shown that these framing effects have an effect on how people evaluate the product. So 75% lean beef is evaluated at as better tasting than 25% fat meat, uh, even though it's exactly the same meat, yeah. And so we show these framing effects for um, products or for prospects with uncertainty. So specifically, we ask people, how much are you willing to pay for a uh, gift certificate from Barnes & Nobles, which is a bookstore in the States, um, a $50 gift certificate, yeah. And so on average, people said they're willing to pay around $23 for it, which is totally fine. Yeah, probably they don't like reading. They don't like the hassle to go to the bookstore or so. We also asked them, how much are you willing to pay for a, book uh, for a gift certificate at Barnes & Nobles, which will either be a $50 gift certificate or a $100 gift certificate? Both are equally likely, so 50-50% chance. And their willingness to pay was much lower, it was about $16. Now, this is really strange. Yeah? That, that is almost impossible because in the second choice, they would at least get the $50 books, uh, uh, gift certificate. So it's very strange that they're willing to pay less for this than for the $50 gift certificate for sure. This effect is called the uncertainty effect, and it's one of the uh, one of the biggest problems, I would say, in uh, the decision-making literature in the last 10 years. And so we show that this effect is due or can be explained with framing effect. So if you tell people, how much are you willing to pay for a lottery that gives you either the 50 or the $100 gift certificate, then you get this very low willingness to pay. If you ask them instead, you don't use the word lottery, but you just say, how much are you willing to pay for a gift certificate, which would be either a 50 or $100 gift certificate, then this effect goes away. So it seems like people react very negatively towards the word lottery. Just by calling it a lottery, willingness to pay drops dramatically. And um, so we show that with other, with other names as well. You get the same effect if you call it a gamble or a raffle or a coin flip. So anything that apparently has to do with uncertainty lowers people's willingness to pay for it. We have to be aware of this unwillingness for uncertainty. And product makers uh, can use this kind of information to choose other words and then sell something which is not, in fact, not uh, good. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, it's as, as with most findings in science, you can use it either way. Yeah, uh, We are not, um, there's no, there's no um, morality involved in this. You can use this effect the way you want to, yeah? Um, if you want to make scare people or make them uh, elicit a negative reaction, you can use all the words that are associated with uncertainty. Uh, for example, make people more aware or more alert to climate change. You would do this. If you try to sell them certain products and you want them to accept the risk, you refrain from using these, these frames, yeah? That's absolutely true. What happens next? What's, what's your next research in, in this field? Um, so these framing effects have been shown for product evaluations. We are the first ones who show it for willingness to pay, which is, I, I find that interesting because it's a, it's a preference measure. Yeah? So how, in, in general, how do you find out how much people like one item more than another? One way is to ask them how much are you willing to pay for it? Another would be, uh, to do choice experiments. So do you choose this one or this one? So a logical next step is to see whether you find the same framing effects for choices. Or 
are choices constructed differently and you find a different effect there. So that's one uh, next step.